two full days here at Owens. I, my brain is full. <laughs> oh, look at a hammered rally car. Tell us, what is the shaker rig? What is this, what's actually happening? Yeah, so uh, this is a seven post shaker rig. Uh, today we're gonna be running in a four post configuration, which essentially just means uh, that we'll be running with these four hydraulic uh, actuators uh, with pans attached underneath each wheel. That okay. essentially simulates like a road profile. Yeah. So we can have different inputs go into the vehicle and then we have our sensors that we attach at the uprights and then on the, on the chassis itself. We can apply an input and then see what the output looks like on the sprung mass and the unsprung mass. Doing some fancy maths on the background, we can kind of see how the car is reacting to those inputs. So all that, it goes back there, we run it through, uh, we run it through a script and it kind of spits out some data that's a bit more digestible. So we have the ability here to essentially take data from a team's car that they've collected yeah. um, over the course of a test day. Yeah. And then we can essentially take that data, make a model out of it, hmm. and have the rig recreate that track, essentially bump for bump. So the car's not running at all while this is going on. You're just, the, the right. machine is doing all the work. Yes. And then we're getting the data from that. Yeah, correct, correct. And so it gives us kind of like a, like a closed loop simulation where we can control the amount of variables that are acting on the car. Yeah. And therefore we can start looking closer and closer at like the small details. Um, at the end of the day, we want to hand back a car that significantly faster right. um, than when it came in. And that's the goal. We'll get the cameras out of your face so you can get to work. <laughs> yeah, no worries. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. In this case, our best setup is opened, but not fully open in the front, and then fully open in the rear. All right, Melvin, my goal is to understand high speed, low speed, and rebound as independent systems inside okay. of the suspension. Just uh, want to kind of clarify initially what compression is and what rebound is. A good way to look at it is if you're going into the air, you know, off of a jump in the car, uh, the wheel comes out all the way, right, and tops out. So that's okay. rebound. And so when you are in the air and then you come back and hit the ground, back onto the ground, the wheel goes into the chassis or into the car. Okay. And that would be counted as compression. Well, essentially within those two um, kind of big distinctions, we have smaller nuanced distinctions. So there is uh, low speed and high speed for each of those two distinct events. Okay. When we're okay. talking about these different speeds, low versus high, we're talking about it at the damper. You know, it has nothing to do with the velocity of the car. The right. speed of the car and so in that case you know uh, low speed can essentially for a quick and dirty way to look at it can be defined as kind of like the body movements of the car um so as you're kind of diving from braking squatting from acceleration or uh rolling from kind of turning right right um all of that you know low in, induces low shaft speed movements on the damper and so once you get into high speed that's a lot more um not necessarily nuanced but that's a lot more of everything else. Big hits, instantaneous big hits, uh, running into stuff, like all of that essentially makes the shaft on the damper, it makes it move very quickly. So that initial hit, right. and then and then it kind of like crosses over into, into low, low speed. Because speed, you have some input. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. But there is a low speed rebound and a high speed rebound. Okay. And we're essentially kind of thinking about it the same way. It's all relative. Oh, because that's all just about the wheel dropping. Yeah, so we're thinking all, we're always folk, like using the damper as a frame of reference okay. for that since it's strictly related to the damper. Okay. It just happens to affect the car, right? It's all based off the shaft velocity of the damper. And so, uh, so in rebound, essentially, like we talked about earlier, as you're kind of braking and the rear's coming up, yeah. you know, it's generally coming up in a low speed rebound circuit. Yeah. Right, high speed rebound is kind of a little bit different so, because it's the wheel falling in air, right? Exactly. High, and so, like, if it if there's a giant hole, a pothole, mm -hmm. and that wheel falls into it, it's yeah. the spring pushing it down plus the weight of the, the tire, yeah, and that's the, the speed of the control that we're saying for high speed rebound, yeah, exactly. You're essentially controlling the release of that spring force okay. with, with high speed rebound. In every form of racing, grip is the most important thing. 
Right. Like and the wheels being on the ground is most the level of grip. Yeah, exactly. And so what we want to do essentially is we want to be able to track the ground and the profile of the ground as best as possible. You want to make sure that the wheel has enough uh, time to come back into contact after every disturbance or every yeah. fluctuation in that profile of the road. So for example, like if there's a pothole, right, and you have too much rebound, right. so you are preventing the wheel from extending quickly right. um, in order to try to control it for right. whatever reason. Um, and what, what, what could potentially happen if you have essentially like a big kind of like square ledge drop off pothole yeah. is as your tire starts tracking over it, it like essentially it doesn't have enough time to extend to touch the ground so yeah. instead the whole entire car that end of the car will start falling into the hole That's so right. on the opposite end um with significantly less rebound or free flowing damper free bleed yeah. then you would see uh this the whole entire wheel and spring kind of coming out really really fast right. and while that sounds great and you know it could be like something which like oh well why wouldn't i just open it all the way all the time right um you could there's a detrimental effect to that to some degree because it'll be coming out too fast yeah and therefore it could actually start upsetting the, the, whole the chassis car. when you see uh a lot of rally cars that hit some huge crest and then like um come down you know generally a lot of times when they're really nicely tuned you see them hit the ground and then like literally it's, just get stable instantly and right. just go and so if you had that all the way open it would hit the ground and then pop up Right. Because you're essentially just com like coming down all the way on the spring and the bump rubber, and then just getting letting all that energy out instantaneously. So it's really hard to find that like sweet spot, and that's really why you come to you, know, you go testing on track, or if you can't don't have access to the track, or if it's something that isn't available all year round, you can come testing in something like the Shake Rig, right. where you can kind of see the effects of that and be able to find those fine tuned settings beforehand. So when you actually go to the track, you're not wasting all your time trying to figure out what's actually going on and using all your bandwidth as a driver to try to figure out what the car is doing instead of actually driving. In this case, with, with your particular suspension setup, we're chasing grip with rebound, and then we are fine tuning it for the application and for the track with compression okay. um, and how particularly that you like to drive. Thank you so much for this. Yeah, no, no worries. <laughs> all right, Tim. So we got two full days here at Olin's. I, my brain is full. Was there any big takeaways for you? You've never really gotten to spend this much time at a suspension company before, right? No, I wish I would have, you know, because I learned the hard way, you know, <laughs> try this, that didn't work, try that. Well, that didn't work. Um, I think the biggest takeaway is uh, the difference on on high speed, the high speed setting where what happens if you leave it high and, and you hit a big bump. I can't even, I guess, put in words, obviously. I'm having a hard time figuring out how simple suspension is. Fluid management in a cylinder to control everything and then all the adjustments and all the components inside and all the little technology that these guys have put into their equipment and all the goal is so that we can remain the wheels can remain on the ground as much as possible so we can go as fast as possible thank you guys for following along we'll look forward to talking to you soon